Happy Labor Day weekend to you. Hope you're enjoying your long weekend off. To help, we've made this week's Explore Tulsa as entertaining as possible. And we start with a great way to exercise and release stress. Then look who's coaching new mamas. Followed by the coolest bikes around. Plus the guy caring for Nemo. Hi, I'm Stevie Fernandez. And I'm Trish Whitmer. It's great to see you with us for this holiday weekend. Stevie, what are you doing? Practicing the modern Japanese martial art, Kendo. Michael and Shaw even let me use one of the swords at the dojo. Oh, you did tell them that Explore Tulsa is not responsible for any damages you may cause. Don't worry, it's all very safe for all ages. Everyone's well trained and fully padded. Kendo means, um, in Japanese, way of the sword. So it's a method of examining yourself as a person through the practice that we do. So it takes a very strong personality to teach effectively. Kendo is a traditional Japanese uh, martial art and sport of uh, fencing. Uh, it's not like what they show in the movies. Uh, it's much different. It's very uh, linear as opposed to uh, flowy like they show in movies. I've always wanted to practice Kendo uh, my whole life. And in 2004, I went to a practice center in Oklahoma City called Senshin Kan Dojo, and I met my teacher there. And he helped me understand how to practice Kendo, but he also impacted my life. Uh, really, I just tried it out in uh, college. I had a friend that wanted to try out the, the club, the local club, and I tagged along, and then we both got really into it. So uh, Kendo is, uh, um, like fencing in general, it's kind of like a, we like to call it like a, a, a physical chess. You're, you're not only benefiting physically from it, but you're also uh, training your mind to figure out how to uh, tackle different problems and find out new solutions. It taught me discipline. I was used to getting things my own way and not having to work very hard for anything. And my teacher uh, set a very high standard and meeting that standard became everything for me. Uh, it motivated me to practice outside of practice as much as I could. It made me dread going to practice in case I would make a mistake or not live up to his expectation. And um, that carried over into my life. Helped me learn how to take things uh, seriously. And uh, I ran into some uh, very serious health problems a few years back and Kendo, uh, the work that I had done in Kendo helped me survive quite literally. So it's, it's impacted my life in every, every possible way. Kendo is my purpose as far as I'm concerned. Oh, so uh, you don't need to have any pre-existing like, no knowledge about Kendo. Um, we start off with just you know, shorts and a t-shirt and we'll teach you how to uh, bow in, how to hold the sword and go through basic footwork and we'll go from the ground up. Um, kendo is, again, it's not very well known in America, so you know, we, we get a lot of adult beginners uh, studying Kendo. I started when I was like 19. In, in Kendo, there's a concept called Ki Ken Taichi, and Ki is your spirit, Ken is the sword, Tai is your body, and Ichi means one. So it's your spirit, your sword, and your body operating together as one in every technique. And we start with a basic swing. They'll be using a wooden sword to practice with, to practice like the most fundamental movement, uh, the easiest way to do something with no resistance. And then as practice progresses, they try to improve that movement and sort of adapt it and evolve it to a variety of different situations. So what you'll see is people trying to coordinate themselves with the sword to act together without thinking as one. So your mind, your will, your body, your physical posture, and the sword all operating together. It's just like a completely uh, wide range of, of people that like kendo and get, get drawn to it. Whether it be, you know, they're interested in Japanese culture or they're interested in the sporting element of it or they're just interested in trying to better themselves as a person. Uh, I want to try to transmit what I've learned to Tulsa. Before we started, there was no real place to practice kendo here. and. As long as our dojo is here, people have the opportunity to study this type of swordsmanship, this type of philosophy, this type of learning. And my focus is to provide as strong an environment as possible for those people that have my same interest, Shaw's same interest, the club's same interest, for as long as possible. The strength, uh, the understanding that you can endure, you can make it if things get tough. You have it, all of us do, all of humanity has it inside of us to push through our own limits 
you can do more than you think you can. And the great way to prove that to yourself is by being pushed towards those limits and then surpassing them. It doesn't have to be a great, impressive, high bar that you're reaching for. For many people, one step is enough, but everyone can take that step. And uh, the Japanese word is konjo, means guts. It's a fortitude, like a deep roots and strength. And after practicing, maybe things go your way, maybe they don't, maybe you win, maybe you lose, but ultimately you're trying to develop yourself and develop your own inner strength. So that's my favorite part about the practice. Kendo is very amazing and everyone at the dojo was really nice and they enjoyed their training. To learn how you can join and train with the Tulsa Kendo Dojo, visit TulsaKendo.com. I thought the headgear was really pretty cool. Just goes to show you how with the proper training you can take on any challenge. That's a little bit of why doulas are so important to the birthing process. Are you trying to compare having a baby to a kendo battle? No, everyone knows having a baby is so much harder. But Missy David joins us next to help mothers through the process. When we return with more Explore Tulsa. Don't exercise too hard. Over-exercising stimulates hormonal changes in the body that promote fat storage. That's right. Actually, over-exercising can make you fat. When it comes to exercise, Focus on maintaining an active lifestyle. Simply make a plan to move more and sit less. Establish a regular cardiovascular workout routine at least three to four times a week. Get out for a brisk walk, regular time on the treadmill, or even the elliptical. For a balanced exercise plan, look for our online video-based workout programs. Get started today by visiting wellnesslifeacademy.com. Sony and Video Revolution take you there. From space travel to world championships. Tomorrow's technology today. 4K smart TVs and the largest flat screens available. Now more than ever, you have the best seat in the world when history is made. Video Revolution. On the northwest corner, 71st and Lewis. Hi again, and welcome back from more Explore Tulsa. So Stevie, how would you describe the birthing process? Honestly, to me, each time one of my kids was born, it was like the closest I ever felt to God. Hmm, well, were you like well prepared and read all the books? I read all the books, but I don't think that it made me feel that prepared. Well, and that's one of the reasons why Missy David decided to become a doula, to make the experience as wonderful as possible for every parent. So a doula is a trained childbirth professional who offers physical, emotional, and informational support to birthing people before, during, and just after childbirth. I got trained as a doula in between my first and second uh, birth experience personally. I had a friend who was a doula who had given me a lot of information during my first birth and um, I just ate up all of the information. I was really fascinated by the birth experience itself. And then during my first birth, I had women there with me who had had babies before, had been with other women when they had had babies. And I realized after the fact that it never occurred to me that I couldn't do it. It never occurred to me that I didn't have what it took to birth my own baby. And I think that's a lot due to the kind of support that I had. People who would use a doula would be anyone feeling like they would like some extra support and encouragement at any point throughout the childbearing year. Interestingly enough, it's not just first-time parents who hire birth or postpartum doulas. It may be people who've had a first-time experience and felt a little lost or felt like they weren't as prepared as they wanted to be or maybe didn't have as much of a positive experience as they wanted to have and the second time going through they want a little bit more information or want to be informed of their options and choices and just have that moral support with them in the experience. Yeah, I think that's probably my favorite analogy in describing what I do is like a coach. So for a sports analogy, your coach is someone who before the game, they are training you, giving you education. So if I'm a birth doula and I'm with you during your birth experience, just like a coach, I'm gonna be on the sidelines, but maybe right in there with you, saying, hey, you can do it, remember this point. 
Um, at times when you might be getting frustrated, I might have to be a little bit more, you know, emphatic about, hey, get your head in the game. And then, you know, when parents are bringing their babies home, we're a coach in the same sense, you know, so saying, you're doing a great job, you know, it's okay, you can do it your way, you don't have to do it the way your friend or sister did it. And, you know, but giving pointers as far as baby care um, and the normalcy of the postpartum period as well. Really, I think every family that I work with, there's always a moment with every single couple or individual person um, that they have come to the edge of, I call it coming to the edge of themselves. You know, we've all experienced that in whether it's a, a race or some other kind of physical experience or a tough life issue where you feel like you have reached the edge and you don't have anything more to give. And there you know, comes a point in just sitting with a person and giving them my energy and encouragement that you can just see a look come over their face and you know that they have gone to the point of feeling like they can't do it and feeling defeated and then all of a sudden realizing that they have exactly what they need in them to keep going. And I see that point with parents in the labor and childbirth experience and I see that with new parents at home with their baby, you know? With the, with the new parents, it's pretty cool. There might be several days or even weeks that I've been coming to help them and they're looking to me for the answers and then there's one day where I, I see that change and instead of them looking to me and asking me how to care for their baby, they're the ones telling me, oh, you know, she's hungry, this is what she needs and this is how she needs to be rocked to sleep and it just, you know, it lights up my day to know that um, I've been able to encourage them to get to that point that they have the confidence that they need to be the parent that they are. It's so easy to see that Missy loves the work she gets to do. If you're expecting a new member to your family, then you might want to visit TulsaFamilyDoulas.com and click on the Meet the Doulas to find Missy. Because I'm pretty sure that I, I've had all the kids I'm going to have. <laughs> I'd like to switch the subject to motorcycles. Oh yeah, because that's just what you need. Maybe not, but I sure like looking at them. And a great place to see those owned by some of the most famous riders is our next stop when we come back with more Explore Tulsa. Why are we in space suits? We are traveling to the future where TVs have a contrast range between 400 nits of brighter whites and blacks as deep as 0.4 nits oh, and 10-bit yeah. color it gives us over a billion individual colors on the screen. Video Revolution already has tomorrow's TVs today with the best in Sony high dynamic range TVs. TVs with contrast and color offering more natural true to life colors? Oh yes, Video Revolution now and in the future on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Hi, Dr. Robert Zellner here. For over 20 years, I've offered affordable, convenient eye care in Tulsa. Right now, you can get one pair of glasses or contact lenses starting at just $99 or my two-pair deal for $129. Hey, and as always, the eye exam's included. Walk-ins are always welcome. Glasses are ready in about an hour. Plus, we have over 2,000 claims to choose from. We're open seven days a week. Come see why we're voted Tulsa Best. And our drive through at 69th and Memorial makes pickup simple and easy. For the best eye care value in Tulsa, Dr. Robert Zellner and Associates. Hi, my name is John Robinson, the owner of Deco Deli, and you're watching Explore Tulsa. Welcome back for more stunt action on Explore Tulsa. Our next stop is home to much of the Evil Knievel collection, along with many other historic motorcycles at the Route 66 Vintage Iron Motorcycle Museum in Miami, Oklahoma. Oh, I'll never forget when my dad took us to the Houston Astrodome in 1971, see Evil jump 13 cars. Ooh. It was amazing, I Trish. I bet it was. And just three years later, May 5th, 1974, Evil would jump 10 Mack trucks at the Tulsa International Speedway. Tony, one of his big things, he'll come in and look at the helmet wall and he said, we need more helmets. And the helmet wall is as big as it gets. Uh, Tony Holden in 2006 decided to open it up as a museum and got a hold of him. He's a third cousin of mine, so got a hold of me and said, hey, let's let's do this. And he owned probably 12 bikes plus a Steve McQueen collection, which used to be kind of the centerpiece of our museum and, until we sold it. And then we kind of focused on evil after that. But he wanted to do something for the town. He's originally from Miami and lives in based out of Tulsa now, but he wanted to do something for our town. He had probably 10 or 12 bikes plus a Steve McQueen collection, and that was in a 
May of 2006 is when we opened, but he kind of was displaying them in the front showroom to the public, but the public couldn't come in. But then in May of 06, we actually opened it up where the public could come in and see it, and then we put a store with it. The British bikes are awesome. I mean, that's the triumphs and stuff like that's always been a focus, but really just anything with a good story and, and with it. We've got a, uh, the one behind you is a uh, Yamaha Street Tracker. It was jumped in the 1960s or 70s by uh, Johnny Cowboy Hall. He was actually uh, from Tulsa. He was out jumping around on it, but it was a 650 compared to what Evil was jumping 750s. But he set three world records with that bike. And then uh, we got a 1917 Harley. It was found in a field down by Bernice and restored. Mr. Shin's bike is what it's called. It's got a pretty neat, unique long story with it. And we have the original sidecar that came with it, and the sidecar's not been restored. It's still rusted and old, so. But yeah, we got several. In the evil room, we've got a, uh, his super van is the centerpiece. It was uh, used for his uh, rocket at the Snake River Canyon jump. He used to haul it, but it was also mission control, where they had the, uh, you know, the control boards and stuff in there. And, and that's what they hauled it around in. We've got a, uh, we've got his x-rays that show, his personal x-rays that show all the bones he broke. 35 of them to be exact. So he always said he broke every bone in his body, but he said, I don't know. If, he always said, I didn't know if I did, but I know I broke 35. <laughs> so we've got uh, all kinds of neat stuff in there that was his, his belt buckle, license plate, his Montana Hall of Fame plaque original drawings for the lunch pail that was popular back in the 70s. He was out here in 2005 at the Buffalo Bike Run. There used to be a big bike run at the Buffalo Run Casino and Tony met him then, brought him out there to that and they became friends and he, they stayed friends all the way till his death in uh, December of 07 and then after that Tony started acquiring most of the stuff in the family. I think Evil kind of led the way, you know, and I, boy, they were using the street bikes, and it was just the daredevil thing, you know, being, I don't know, it was crazy that they did it. I mean, even, even women got into it, you know, and then the one guy was jumping from ramp to bare ground, and that was, I forgot his name, but it was, I don't know what got him into it. I think Evil led the way on being that daredevil, being that, you know, or he called himself the last American Gladiators. Well, you know, we started small. We only had the few bikes in the McQueen collection, and then we kind of got more into the memorabilia because we didn't really start out with all the memorabilia you see in here. And we kind of wanted to tell the stories a little more with the memorabilia, like the helmet wall, the, which we have over 100 helmets on that wall, which shows the evolution of the helmet from early, you know, turn of the century all the way till present day, really. I mean, so we wanted to tell the story with the photos and all the memorabilia that we have throughout the museum. And that's kind of how it got set up. And then the gas station, it kind of, you know, what you would have seen in the 1950s, riding your bike down a dirt road, you know, to pull over and get gas. We're always interested in more vintage bikes. They're just getting harder and harder to find. I think we're definitely wanting more of those. You know, anything from the 30s, 40s, especially Indians. Indians are great, and Harleys too, but, you know, we're always interested in that. As far as the foreign tourists, we get a lot of foreign tourists come through. They, you know, they rent their bikes in Chicago and they'll ride all the way to LA. And so we, uh, and we're in most travel guides now, Route 66 guides. So, and we're hooked up with several tour, tour groups. And so we probably, gosh, I don't know how many groups we get a year, 70, 80 groups come through. It could have anywhere from only five or six bikes all the way up to say 40 or 50. So we get some big ones. And the local, we're, we're loved here in town that I know of. I mean, it seems like we're, you know, everybody knows us. Everybody knows where to send people when they're looking for even just Route 66 collectibles. Oh my gosh, that was one of the coolest places we've been to. I'd love to have tried to do what Evil did, except for the breaking the bone part. That kind of shied me away. <laughs> to see the collection for yourself, visit Route66VintageIron.com to learn more. Or you can also find out more about all the fun at Grand by watching RSU TV's Living Grand on Grand Lake each Thursday night at 8 p.m. After all that excitement, we're going to need something a little more calming and beautiful. Well, I have just the thing, an amazing aquarium set up by Ben Ware when we come back with more Explore Tulsa. We do podiatry, we do dental oral appliances, we do women's health, we see children, pediatrics, and um, overall family care. I'm a primary care provider for Sooner Care. We're also taking commercial insurances now as well. Any given day, I might do a well child on a four-day-old baby and then see a 72-year-old who's here because they need a follow-up on their sleep study. 
Patients seem to like the idea where they can just come here and they don't have to worry about going to all these different specialists, whether they need a sleep study or a CPAP machine or diabetic shoes or an oral appliance, we help bring all that to the table for them. And especially with oral appliances, custom fit by a specially trained dentist and we have Dr. Bennett who's the best in the business. It has been my dream to be able to work with all the specialties together. There are not many places in the United States that have all parts of this together. It's, it's, to me it's amazing and that's truly how sleep and patient care should be. Hello, my name is John Paul Tucker. I'm the author of Cyclist in You, a 28-day shift, and you're watching Explore Tulsa. There you are. It's great to have you still with us for more Explore Tulsa. Now, Stevie, do you have an aquarium at your house? No, but I do own the movie Finding Nemo. That doesn't count. I'm just not very good at knowing what fish would make good friends or even what's the best thing to put in it. Well, that's where Brian Ware comes in with Tulsa Aquarium Service. He has everything you need to make just enjoying your aquarium the hardest thing you do. It's been a, a natural love of mine since I was a little kid, so I can't think of anybody besides maybe my grandfather who nurtured that love of nature for me. That was one of the, the funnest things for me was really seeing um, the natural environment, how I could take an animal that was in a sterile environment in a pet store or just in a cage and creating the most natural ecosystem possible in a glass box or in a contained environment. When I was 12 years old, I was in a doctor's office and I saw that they had a little aquarium and it was always low on water or it needed a little bit of fish food or it, it, it just, or it had too much fish food. And at that point at 12 years old, I thought to myself, I could go into doctor's offices and take care of aquariums. Then growing up, needing to make money and following my passion didn't often go hand in hand. Um, I, actually, I actually sold real estate full time for four years and really learned about service and really providing a, a good service for people. But I was at a real estate trade show when I decided, well, what would I do if I didn't have to make money? And what that was, was I would put amazing ecosystems in people's homes and offices. It's definitely been studied and proven that having an, uh, having an aquarium in your home uh, can lower stress. I don't just offer people an aquarium. I don't just offer um, fish or something pretty to look at. But we'll, really, I'm enriching a part of their life. I'm giving them an escape at the end of a busy day. That really is the benefit uh, for a busy, a businessman or maybe in a nursing home. The home or the business definitely has an effect on what kind of an aquarium I put in. The most important thing I do is really gauging the customer's needs, seeing why they want an aquarium. And so um, I'll, I'll offer them or they'll definitely come out and say this is exactly what I want. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's really fun finding the right fish for the right people, the right style. It's an art to see what textures, uh, what colors will go together so that you always have a place that is calling your attention in. Say that if there's a cave and there's a little critter that lives in that cave, you're working with so many different elements of art. You're working with elements that are color, you're working with texture, but you're also working with the characters of these animals that inhabit these spaces. So you may be drawn, your attention may be drawn into a cave, but then right here is some other anemone with a clownfish. And, and so the eye always has a place to go. Um, you never really stop in one point because one point draws you to another part of the aquarium. That's the goal is, is to be full of color, full of life, but not chaotic. A, a, a calling of mine more than just to do aquariums, but teach other people how to follow their dreams to do the same thing. People ask me, well, how can you make a living just cleaning algae? Like, there's a way to do everything. If you have a passion at something, you truly can find a way to bring that into somebody's life and that's I was glad that I found that for myself.
And if I can bring peace into somebody's life, if I can bring a reprieve from the grind of working, then that's awesome. That's, that's good for me. His aquariums are crazy beautiful and peaceful. To find out how to get one for your home or office, visit TulsaAquariumService.com to get it all set up. I tried talking to the fish. Ooh, you didn't try to speak whale again, did you? No, of course not. According to a New Zealand researcher, you can communicate with fish by making grunts, chirps, and pops. Yeah, you keep working on that, and we'll be right back with more Explore Tulsa just ahead. Take charge of your health. We are what we put into our bodies. We approach medicine from a unique standpoint. Rather than treating only the symptoms of an illness, we work to find the root cause and promote wellness of the entire body. Our clinic offers complete assessment and treatment programs, including hormone replacement therapy, osteopathic manipulative therapy, and genetic DNA testing. It all starts with a medical evaluation. Contact us today to begin your path to wellness. Look at us. We woke up one morning with every song that ever mattered to anyone. So now what? Music's meant to be heard, out loud, where your life happens, where you dance, where you love, and where you live. When everyone has every song ever written, what matters most is how you listen. Come here for yourself at Video Revolution. Hi, my name is Jamie Horton with Bone and Spoon Cereal Bar, and you're watching Explore Tulsa. Be sure and join us next week when we visit the Cherry Street Farmer's Market. Ooh, special thanks to Shaw, Michael, and everyone at the Tulsa Kendo Dojo for introducing us to their martial art. Thanks too to Missy David for making life easier for expectant parents with the services provided at the Tulsa Family Doulas. And special thanks to Chris Martin for telling us all the stories behind the bikes at the Route 66 Vintage Iron Motorcycle Museum. Plus thanks to Ben Ware for keeping the waters calm at the Tulsa Aquarium Service. Remember, if you miss any of the show, you can always catch us at ExploreTulsa.com. As always, each week we feature the people, places, and attractions that make us proud to call Tulsa our home. And hey, don't forget to like us on Facebook and share with us someone you think Tulsa should know more about. Plus remember, Explore Tulsa's brought to you by Video Revolution, located on the northwest corner of 71st and Lewis. Stop by, say hello to Ron and all the guys for all your home entertainment needs. And Export Tulsa is also proudly brought to you by Dr. Robert Zillner and Associates. And with Tulsa's best eye care value with two locations, 3030 South Harbor and 69th and Memorial. And we welcome our newest sponsors, Drs. Mark and Michelle Sherwood at 61st and Sheridan. Remember, your journey to whole body healing and wellness begins at the Functional Medical Institute. Well, that's all the time we have for you on this week's show, but we'll see you next week right here here on Explore Tulsa.